loans. Mm. I took that money and started a business. Because I'm like, I'm young. If I fail, I could try again. But I didn't realize how long it really takes to get those tens of thousands of dollars when you have to make that money. And then my family really believed in me and allowed me to take a loan on their home. So I took, uh, I think it was like $50,000 I took on my mom's home. Mm. And that's why I was so determined to make sure I paid it. Because they would had this confidence in me. I needed to make sure that I kept up the, my end of the bargain. I'm not just going to walk away from my responsibilities. So what I learned from that business is you do not need a ton of money to start a business. You do not need a ton of money to make money. Um, and subsequently, I'm operating my business so much leaner now and making so much more money than ever before. Mm -hmm. And I teach people the same thing. Don't dig into your savings to start a business. If you're working currently, get whatever you're working and you, you know, you're carving off some separate side money that you're not going to miss. Use that maybe to start your business. But don't raise all this extra, extra money and put yourself into debt to start a business. Don't do it. I've learned the hard way. That's good. That's good. A question I have is about the emotional aspect of it. Mm -hmm. How was it, besides getting out of the debt, how, even, even getting to that point where you, in the pro you're in the process of getting out of the debt, what mental, I guess, perspective did you have when it came to that, because you mentioned not really wanting to even go down the street, and I know a lot of times our money is associated with our emotions. Oh yeah. And um, it takes a lot just to, to face it, like you said, um, but not only to face it, to actually get out of it. So, what were some of the things that you kind of replayed in your mind to keep you motivated, to keep you going, to seeing the results that you experienced? The first thing I think I had to do was acknowledge that I was really depressed because I was I was trying to avoid my emotions and. It was only getting worse. And when I really acknowledged that I had kind of fallen into this, this depression about the debt, I, it, it, I had to be strong enough to say, okay, I'm not going to let it get me. Um, and to be quite honest with you, around that time, my grandmother had passed away, and my mom had to pay for me to go to the funeral because I didn't have the money, right? Mm. And this is a, not a story that I share with a lot of people, but I, so I went to the funeral, and there's this part of my uh, family's land where people are buried, because you, you bury on, on, on the land. And I, was, I remember standing there in the middle of these graves, and I, I said to myself, the things that these people who are buried here had to go through mm -hmm. so that I could be here, mm -hmm. that, all that is bigger than what I'm facing right now. I had to really have, I had to come to Jesus moment. Really. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, they went through a ton of stuff to get me here. My grandmother was born in 1914. Mm. So her, her predecessors were buried there. You're thinking about what years those were and what was going on at that time, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, this is so much bigger than me. They went through a ton of stuff to get me here. And here I am depressed about some money. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just money, you know? Mm -hmm. And that was like the first part of really me digging out of the, some of the, the depression that I was in. And I call that the gift that my grandmother gave me. It was like the, wow. the thing. Because mm -hmm. if I had not, good. if I had not <laughs> been there for her funeral, I would not have been to this place that oh, I never man. been before. Yeah. And I yeah. wouldn't have had that, that revelation. So when I got back. You need to write a book. <laughs> well. About that. The <laughs> gift that my grandmother gave me. It really was. It really, that's what <laughs> that's I felt. It was stuff. like a gift. Mm -hmm. That's good stuff. So when I got mm -hmm. back, when I got back to the U.S., I was like, I was determined. I was like, you know what? My grandmother was a really strong woman, and she probably would not have been happy with me feeling the way that I had been feeling about this money. It's just money. It's money. That's all it is, right? It's printed on paper. Paper, you can rip it up, whatever. It burns. It's just money. Um, and I thought my life was bigger than this. It's more important than this. So I, I had to mentally resolve that I was bigger than the debt, mm -hmm. right? And my life was more important than the debt. What can I sacrifice? for just a short amount of time so that I could have a better life and the life that my grandmother had sacrificed so that I could have. That's what I kept thinking. And that's what motivated me and pushed me, to be honest with, with you. And then I kept reading stories about other people who had kind of like dug their way out and found a, a community of personal finance people who were really working through some issues. And it's good when you have people that you can talk to who know what you're going through mm -hmm. and motivate you as well. Because nobody wants to talk about money. Nobody does. We were even afraid to tell people how much money we make. And that's a positive thing. Right? People people would rather tell you about their weight yes. than their money. Yes. Literally. 
They'll tell you about everything that happened on their date. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to tell you how much they make. Right. And when when it comes to debt, forget about it. Right. You definitely are not going to hear how much people owe. Right. Except you're going to say, oh, I owe Sally Mae. But nobody's going to say, I owe $120,000. Or, or worse, talk <laughs> about how much time.